there was very much intentional to stay wide on that wreck until there was movement by Priest yeah. or he was out of the car. But also, I watched the uh, the YouTube Dale Jr. Cam. Oh yeah, footage. Um, and and I watched you and Jeff Burton react to that while it was happening, and you guys very very specifically just watched and did not jump in with reactions. Although I knew you had them. I knew you had them. I mean, you always have opinions and, and reactions, but you guys very deliberately did not speak up and let that thing unfold. So I think that was that was evident to me in the priest wreck. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, yeah, with the priest wreck, that was just – I'm going to tell you, man, I've, I've – uh, everybody was so taken aback by that crash. Me too. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. We, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I – it was you weren't no i mean it looked like a lot of crashes i've seen in my life really yeah you well you, i mean barrel there's definitely been barrel rolls and there's definitely been you know cars flipping for sure yeah. you brought that up it's very old school yeah so i never seen a car do that many rotations in the air really i, I if if there's been one that was even close i can't think yeah. of it you would know better than i would well i mean i wouldn't know exactly what wreck would have that many rotations before hitting the ground again but like i mean uh dick brooks wrecked at talladega on the back stretch in the mid 70s nasty wreck i mean the the image of him crawling out the front windshield of that car um is insane covered in dirt roof crushed and he he's getting helped out by two or three guys it's like the the most it's one of the most incredible like profound photos ever taken in nascar's history is that picture of dick brooks getting helped out of the front windshield of of that mercury and so if you haven't ever seen it man you need to look at it think about doing it right now looking up right now um that wreck right there is kind of for me the first big super speedway talladega ryan priest style wreck um you're gonna watch the damn wreck um 1975 talladega yeah and so so he's barrel old, barrel rolling all the way down the back straightaway of course the cars doesn't lift and all that right it's on the ground yeah. it's rolling on the ground but yeah um still nasty i mean it's a nasty no crash. doubt about it yeah and so you go to you fast forward to like Ra Rusty Wallace wrecking at Talladega, Rusty Wallace wrecking at Daytona. I mean, Rusty Wallace had so many flips. Um, but there's a lot of examples of nasty, nasty crashes down the back straight. Darrell Waltrip, in, you know, flipping the Western Auto car. Uh, I've got that car in the woods. Um, yeah. So that one, look at that. Boy, Rusty's was Rusty's was pretty vicious. Yeah, yeah, right. And it had it had a good handful of barrel rolls in there, right? Yeah. And so when I saw Priest wreck, my mind went right to those crashes. With the dirt getting in the car and flying out of the windows in every barrel roll, just mud and dirt going everywhere. Um, window nets flying loose and the hood, you know, the top come out of the roof. None of that was like shocker. Like, oh, my God, how did that happen? It's like, damn, yeah, I've seen that before. Um, you know, it's, you know, we've got way more safety and technology in the cars today than we did when we were seeing those more those wrecks more often. It has been a long time since we've seen a car get airborne like that and barrel roll and do the things you're talking about. It has been a while, for sure. We don't see it anymore. We thought, you know, I guess we thought, hey, we got enough apparatuses on the cars now that those wrecks are a thing of the past. Well, not. I guess they aren't. I guess they're not. In, right. the, in the right, perfect scenario, physics takes over and does what it does. Right. Um, Steve will say, you know, Steve's opinion, Latar's opinion was, well, everything was fine till it got to the grass. And when it got to the grass, the distance from the bottom of the car to the ground changes and more air can get underneath it. And that, and then it's it, it went up. Partly true, I imagine. Um, I don't just I don't know. I'm not saying that's incorrect, but that car turned. That car got turned so quickly and was in that position, right when it went airborne, so quickly it had not scrubbed any speed off. So it's li the lift point for um, this car 
is way lower than you think. It's not 185 miles an hour. It's not, you know, it's not 175 miles an hour. It doesn't take much to get these cars airborne. But that car was going way faster than I believe they assume a car would go in that moment when it's gotten into that position. Sideways. Yeah. Almost like a wing. Typically, they have an idea that cars are going to probably slow down, I don't know, 25, 35 miles an hour by the time it gets to that point. And they try to create tests and create roof flaps and all the apparatuses and safety things on the cars to try to keep the car on the ground in that window of speed, right? This car was far above that. I don't think anything NASCAR would have done or could do would keep that car on the ground. I think that this is one of those scenarios where there's not much you could have done to avoid the end result. The car turned. It was going way faster in that moment when it gets airborne. And I don't know how you stop that. I really don't. Um, I'm glad to hear you say this because as is most the cases when something like this happens, whether it's in NASCAR or anything else, everyone feels like they need to have a solution and an answer right away. And so what you had is some people basically going, dig up the grass at every racetrack. Pay the whole thing. (laughs) It, which is, I'm like, wait a second, grass didn't do nothing really bad here. That yeah. like we're gonna go ahead and incriminate the grass. The yeah. grass is in there, and so it's like before we. And I don't know about what grass's role in that was, but my point is, is that uh, I thought that that was kind of a abrupt reaction to start saying it was the grass that caused it, and that must be fixed. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I I'm not so sure that's that's it either yeah. again there's not any experts really talking about that i think that the grass probably serves a purpose other than just aesthetics anyways yeah um but uh yeah so i guess my question to you then would be maybe if you're if you're on the position that not much could have really done then should nascar go back and try to make improvements on the car i think that you don't touch the racetrack you don't need to pave the back straight away uh, that's un- that's probably um, unnecessary. I wouldn't do that. Um, I believe that you know it, you're still you st- you haven't really solved the problem by paving the surface of the back straightaway infield. You get a car turned around at that rate of speed, it's going in there. Racing season is well underway, and it's time to go full throttle. Feel the excitement of every lap like never before with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet just $5, and they'll get $150 in bonus bets instantly, no matter what goes down on the track. While we can't personally gamble on the race, the Dirty Mo Doe crew loves to bet on the matchups, and DraftKings offers a lot of them. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now with the code DJD. New customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code DJD, only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The rocker panels are rolled. All right, when we look down at the very bottom of the rocker panels, the rocker panels aren't a sharp edge. It's not a 90-degree sharp edge. It's rolled, right? So it's like the bottom of a wing. There could be some you could look at that rocker panel and go, maybe if we change the shape of the rocker panel, would that change uh, the lift, right? Would that change how air can climb under the car? Uh, I don't know that, but I would look at the rocker panel and how it is rolled. Now, when that car goes up in the air, right, and we see the bottom of it, the bottom is flat. It's panned from one end to the other. It's a, it's a flat pan, right? Um, I don't know if, there's something they can do at super speedways with the undercarriage of the car to where it creates a different scenario. I don't know that all of those things are that critical and that important. I think what, what, um, and I don't know that changing the package and changing the style of racing there can avoid that, right? If you, you still, you still could find, you know, all you need is two cars on the racetrack to recreate that wreck. You know, that wreck wasn't a product of pack racing or or restricted engines or any of that. Two cars, two two or three cars right there is all you needed to yep. have that car flip like that. Um, the 43, Eric Jones, love him to death, great dude. He hit him in the ass pretty hard. 
You know what I mean? He hit him pretty damn hard. I mean, it's late in the race. You're trying to give a guy a shove. A lot of times, though, those hard hits are really not that productive. You know? But he hits him hard, and it, and he, and it turned him out of control. Yeah. Like, there was not any chance for Priest to save that. Um, even if no, you know, even if he doesn't get struck by the car on the inside, Briscoe, he's going in the dirt. He's going in the grass. He's going in the infield. He gets hit, hit like that. He's hit, he was off. He was gone. So I think it's unfortunately for me, man. I'm thinking in this scenario, there doesn't need to be a reaction. Could be everything did its job right, right? Like it could be. Well, I we, mean, think about it. If Priest gets in the car and races this weekend at Darlington, I would. Say, hey, everything worked as designed. That's my point, yeah. I mean, like, listen, if we go back and take a broader look at it, Ryan Blaney and Ryan uh, Priest are still with us. And the, and I don't know, yeah, if if, if Priest is going to race this weekend, I have honestly haven't heard. I know he was held. Not uh, 100% cleared yet, right, but right. I think he, you know, his plan is. But, uh, I mean – Kudos to somebody. That car, yeah. that car held enough together. I know the roof uh, came open and the neck came open and that kind of stuff. But Ryan Priest Dude, is still with a, us, man. Things barrel rolling through the air. It's not I, some things you 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 can't worry about that wind and net and all these things coming apart because in that scenario, I mean the the roof was crushed. The I think there was some deflection in the actual hoop bar where the wind and net bolts or or snaps up there. So I mean. The car actually held together better than it. You like go back and look at the Dick Brooks and the Rusty Wallace. That car, those those cars are shedding parts. Yeah.